okay, we're going. <laughs> When you tap into people who travel, you're tapping into this like different value system of people who don't care about just paying bills their whole life. They want to like learn something about the world and see something and break out of their shell. They're they're a product of their environment, right? And the people that are traveling are saying it's okay to move around the world it's okay to see see the sights do interesting things that are kind of crazy i mean back in the day people couldn't really do that but now they can to some extent ah, i hate portland ah. <laughs> i left the jehovah's witnesses because well there's a million reasons but the primary one was it didn't work it wasn't a functional religion to me. Okay, I'm gonna go over the Hawthorne Bridge, the second oldest bridge in Portland. It's pretty freaky. They're like, someday when you die, this will all be better. You know, we could all say that at the end of the day, right? We're all gonna die, but that's not a solution. It's not a working solution. Ah, it's stressing me out. Bam, we're downtown. Instant downtown. I can park here, actually. I think I just want to save, save up, and keep traveling. It's what's inspiring to me. It's awesome. It's actually everything. Traveling is so awesome. <laughs> They actively protect pedophiles from the law. And that was probably the second biggest reason I left that religion, is because my mom was horribly sexually abused. They create a safe haven for pedophilia, which is weird because you'd think they would just let them, you know, disappear and it would be out of their, out of their hands, you know? If the Jehovah's Witnesses were proactive about stopping pedophilia, about acknowledging that it's an incurable thing and reporting it to the authorities and arresting these people and, I don't know, some kind of higher authority taking care of it that's not the Jehovah's Witnesses. My mom could have had a shot, you know, of finding justice or something. I mean, I know once the damage is done when you're a child, the damage is done, right? But it's the injustice of it that bothered me that they could be so horrible to her and molest her and her sisters and just be a witness. And he was respected in his congregation. I can't tolerate that in any kind of structure, whether it's religion or government or anything. That type of blatant injustice, that's what happened to my mother and they pretend it's not even a problem. It's unacceptable and there's no reason why it has to be that bad there. Yeah, you can see the giant spikes on it. It's definitely a pyrocanthus. You don't want to mess with this plant. Look at that thing. Yikes. It's got weapons. Thorns are actually modified leaf tissue, which is really interesting. Look, children all tied to ropes. <laughs> so you want to see the Oregon coast? All of it. Or the California coast? I don't know, what are you thinking? Well, we have to make up our mind. Can't we see the whole coast? It's a very slow drive. <laughs> like How about you look at a map? We can see the coast in the morning. Yeah, that's what I want to do. So but, we, should we drive all night and see the coast in the morning? Mm. Do you want to go to the Oregon coast? Tell me right now. Oregon coast. Okay. I felt a lot of pressure on me 
the first pressure was the pressure to get baptized. Um, it was my mother that really sealed the deal. She said that Armageddon was right around the corner and if I didn't get baptized and I knew that Jehovah was the real God, that I would be immediately destroyed when Armageddon would come. She basically gave me the death penalty and it scared the hell out of me, so I got baptized. And they said that the real baptism was saying a prayer to Jehovah in private, which was weird because I'd never heard that before until my mom told me the night before I got baptized. So here I am in this hotel room at this district convention, about to be put in a swimming pool, and I said the dumbest prayer ever. <laughs> It wasn't even sincere. It was just like, these people are gonna put me in water tomorrow and I have to worship you forever, even if I think you suck. You know, it's like, what? <laughs> I really feel like a shower. <laughs> it's such a nice day for hiking. You start seeds in soil. It flows the nutrients through the roots. It was insane, Scott. The plants were huge and healthy and awesome. <laughs> and I put this really bizarre African cucumber horned melon in there. And I came back later, it took over the entire greenhouse. <laughs> it grew to the ceiling and started wrapping around all the lights and it was like basically going to destroy the, the school's greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody took it out. <laughs> I was like, no, it was three weeks. It was awesome. But I'd really like to do a hydroponics station in my house, considering how easy it is. When you damage plants, it stimulates them to grow more. <laughs> They're like, I'm broken. I need to push out more growth. Huh. So I was kind of pressured into auxiliary pioneering um, because it was the last days and you had to like make a big effort for Jehovah and they had this track that they were passing out. It had the most dramatic, uh, it was like a sky at night with lightning bolts shooting out of it. You opened it up and there was two pages. And I remember I was talking to a woman in the door-to-door -door work and I opened up the tract and I was showing her the inside of it and I suddenly had this weird feeling that what I was showing her was completely insane. <laughs> and well, I mean, it was a seven headed leopard beast with a crazed prostitute riding it, wearing a purple dress and her face was smeared with blood. She's holding a golden goblet filled with the blood of all these murdered babies and people on earth. And I had to explain this image to a perfectly innocent bystander standing at a door out of nowhere. And I just realized that if someone showed this to me and I had no idea what it was, I would think that they're totally crazy. And I had that like kind of flash reverse image going, it was just so crazy. The tract, if you read it, the language was so clear. It was, this is it. The end of the world is here. It's gonna probably happen on some crazy date that everyone speculates about. And then I was just like, okay, I'm giving this last days about six months. And if it doesn't come, I'm a total fool. I've been completely duped into handing this crap out to people at bus stops and I'm so embarrassed that I was pressured into this as a child and I will just walk away from it all. Which didn't actually happen that clean and neat. I wish it would have. Because I decided to live with the witnesses in Nicaragua. <laughs> that was, wow.
want you to do it pretty quick. Um, when you're kind of a teenager, you have to study these questions and the answers and do research, you know, about basic Bible truth and doctrines. And I think that is something that's probably a little bit better than other religions in the respect of infant baptism when you don't even have a choice. And that's one of their big things. That's okay, but they still pressure you to make a huge lifetime commitment at a very young age um, when you don't really know that much about the world, really. I mean, what are you, 15, 16? You can't unbaptize. There's no such thing. Your, your fate is sealed once you're baptized. So I got baptized, and because of that, it screwed me out of any sort of dignified exit to the religion. 